On June 29th, Rahul Gandhi tried to drive down the highway from Imphal to Chirchandpur before being stopped by Manipur police at Bishnupur. The day before, news click took the same route. It was a quiet day and an uneventful drive. On both sides of the highway, though, there was evidence of destruction, indicative of the scale of the conflict that began on May 3rd in Manipur. Soon after crossing Torbung, we arrived at the anglo kuki Centenary Gate at Lysan, a site that comes up often in the chronology of the violence. Bunkers previously manned by armed civilian volunteers on both sides have been dismantled to an extent. Central Armed Forces, paramilitary and army now man several checkpoints along the route. In town, there has been a rechristening. Lamka, the old name for the settlement that is currently a district headquarters, has taken hold. The mention of Churchandpur has been virtually removed from road signs, establishments and institutions. This is an utterance of long-standing tribal opposition to the name itself, on both geographic and historical grounds. A majority tribal district with a population of about 4 lakh based on Aadhaar data, this is the de facto capital on this side of the border. Young men walk around in t-shirts proclaiming tribal unity. Markets are open only three days a week and it seems that every resident is mobilized and playing a part in the movement, either engaged in defense, humanitarian relief, political discourse and media outreach. The Indigenous Tribal Leaders Forum has emerged as the coordinating body for the movement in Lamka. As an opener for news click coverage from the area, we spoke to Ginza Walzong, who heads the forum's media cell. Uh, Ginza, thanks for talking to Newsclick. Uh, first up, because uh, it is uh, today, I guess, the big story, uh, we're expecting a possible uh, resignation from the Chief Minister of Manipur, N. Biren Singh. Uh, does this possibility, whether it happens today or somewhere down the road, open up room for conversation, for dialogue to begin uh, between your organizations? And we'll get to how uh, the cookie side is organized, of course, uh, in a bit. Uh, but does it open up the possibility of conversations and dialogue happening uh, towards uh, a solution, a way forward? Uh, whether the uh, Chief Minister N. Biren Singh resign or not, uh, our organization, ITLF, uh, has decided not to talk to the uh, state government. We, we will only talk to the central government because we do not have any more trust in the state government, uh, whether it's uh, being led by uh, the C. Uh, Biren Singh or not. Uh, but given how much of a role N. Biren Singh has had uh, in the events that have uh, followed from the 3rd of May onwards, uh, does it at least give a sense of hope or a sense of possibility that, uh, that there is some kind of positive engagement possible in the future? I, I don't think so because um, it's not only uh, it's an, uh, Biren Singh's idea. The entire thing is of the uh, Mete communities. Because uh, if we look at uh, what the uh, Mete Lipun uh, leader uh, talk about wiping off the entire Kuki population mm. and also the uh, civil organization called Kokomi who declare war uh, against the uh, Kuki community. So it's not only just about N. Biren Singh's government, it's, it's, uh, it's all about the Mete community. Mm. So it's all about ethnic, you know, fencing. Mm. So whether the Chief Minister N. Biren Singh is replaced or not, I think the agenda, the Mete agenda will remain the same. Right. Uh, so, okay, with, with that having been uh, settled, we'll go back a little bit to talking about uh, how the Kuki are organized because one thing that we have seen uh, in our time here uh, as well as traveling to Kangpokpi and other areas uh, is that there is a level of organization and mobilization in society at large, mm. whether it's men or women or children even. Uh, everyone is participating in some way in helping those who have been affected by the conflict. Mm. Or, uh, or in some way, shape or form, like uh, yourselves who are engaged in the political side uh, of things. Uh, so tell us a bit about how you, ha you are organized and uh, at this point is the ITLF to be considered the organization that is sort of leading the movement uh, of the Kuki people? Right. 
Um, ITLF is basically uh, for Suratanpur district. It was made for uh, Suratanpur district. The uh, tribe leaders who are in Suratanpur uh, comes together and form this uh, indigenous uh, tribal leaders forum, basically for Suratanpur district. However, um, the the epicenter, the the issue of the current current uh, issue started from Surachanpur district only. Mm. So whether uh, ITLF like it or not has to take up the movement. Mm. That's why uh, ITLF became the leader or the sp uh, spear, uh, ITLF spearhead this uh, current uh, movement. So right now uh, we are, ITLF are, uh, is leading the movement. At the same time, uh, people in other districts like Kangpokpi, uh, Chandel, Tengnopal, uh, they are also facing the same kind of issue that we are facing here. Uh, although the issue started in Surachanpur. Um, so, since we are not prepared for this movement, as it just come you know out of the blue, we are not prepared. So we do not have time to. Um, constitute ITLF in other districts. Mm. That's why it's only in uh, Sichuanpur district as of now. Mm. So in Kangpupi, there is uh, an organization called Kotu. In More, <coughs> there's an organization called HTC, which is the Hill Tribe Council. Mm. And in, uh, in Chandel, if I'm not mistaken, the Kuki Chief Association is uh, taking up the uh, movement. So since uh, so Chanpur is where the epicenter of the issue is. Hmm. ITLF is currently leading and the others are uh, following. Hmm. And, and, and ITLF is made up of who? Like, of course, the <coughs> name indicates something. Right. Who are you? All the recognized tribe in, uh, in, in Thura Chanpur. For example, uh, the Tharavkuki, the Paites, the Mar, the Zhou, the Simtes, the Vaipes, and Tedimchin. These are the, you know, the tribes which constitute ITLF. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, of course, we have uh, heard and everyone has reported on the demand for separate administration. Uh, but what, what is your overall, what do you want uh, out of this? Uh, of course, uh, from your side, you, it is something that you have been pushed into over time. Right. So you can get into a bit of the history if you like, give us a bit of context. Uh, and tell us what the demands are cohesively, if there is a cohesive demand for all of these tribes. Because <coughs> also, uh, in terms of numbers and things like that, some tribes are smaller. Thado, for example, are probably bigger in number. Mm. So there must be some different uh, particular demands that apply to particular uh, members of the organization as well. Right, right. Uh, like I said, ITLF is not a political party or a political organization in the first place. It's just mm. a... Uh, conglomerate of all recognized tribes mm. just to uh, tackle you know uh, certain issues which are related to the tribes however like I said whether we like it or not the movement started the crisis started and uh, we have to take this up mm. now um, apart from ITLF uh, there are other uh, nomenclature groups I would say like the Kuki in P, mm. Manipur, and we also have the Jomi Council. Mm. So, and, and the Mar in Puyo as well. Mm. So, um, since they are not uh, involved in the, from the beginning, ITLA has to, uh, to uh, initiate the, the movement. And um, in terms of, like I said, it's not a political uh, organization. Uh, for a political demands, we have the SOO groups. With, uh, which are the KNO and the UPF group. Mm. They are the one who are, who demands our political uh, uh, aspirations. Mm. So as of now, um, we are working together with the SOO group as well. And uh, we, we are in continuous in touch with them so that we, our demands are in sync. So uh, let me get uh, go back to the SO groups. Mm. SO group from I think from 2005, they have started demanding a separate administration from the government of India. Mm. They have not specified exactly what they uh, uh, they demand, but 
they have been uh, demanding separate administration right. from that time onward mm. and the government has been in dialogue with them for a long long time and now that the uh, the crisis erupted and the ITLF uh, have started demanding total separations from Manipur so the the demands with the SO group have uh, demanded way back in 2005 mm. uh, is now currently in sync with uh, what ITLF is demanding now. So essentially what you're saying is like the old political objectives of these SO groups and now the social and, and sort of uh, real politic as aspirations of mm. the Koki people mm. are somehow coming or not somehow coming, yeah. but coming together. Right. Okay. And uh, mm. last time also the 10 MLAs that we have uh, have given a memorandum to Amit Shah, the Union Home Minister, and they demanded a total separation from Manipur. Mm. So the MLAs, the People's Representative demands, mm. the SO group demands, mm. and the civil so uh, society organization demands are all the same right now. Mm. So we all demand total separation from Manipur. Mm. Is that what has led to the kind of cohesiveness that we see on the ground here? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so in terms of that uh, sort of conversation that is ongoing and you are, like you mentioned, you are in touch and working in coordination with the KNO and the UPF, uh, there have been some conversations, it seems, with the Sioux groups about uh, the possibility or the idea of territorial councils. Is there anything that you can uh, tell us further on that point and how, uh, particularly in the context of how this might be different from the idea of Hill Area Committees, sort of ADCs and, and Autonomous District Councils and those, or is it very much similar to how these things actually happen in uh, government systems and processes that are already functional in India? Right, those, uh, what you are talking about, the Territorial Council, Autonomous District Council, are all the demand that were made before this crisis. Mm. So this crisis, current crisis, the ethnic cleansing that we face right now, changed the political scenario altogether. Mm. Earlier, the SO group were uh, signing uh, an agreement with the government mm. for not to break the integrity of Manipur. Mm. Now that is not valid anymore because uh, so many uh, people, so many of our people have been killed, uh, so many churches and houses and properties have been burned down mm. by, in the Infal Valley by the Métis community. So, we don't see any reason why we should, you know, continue to live together with them. That's why the idea of not breaking the integrity of Manipur uh, does not stand anymore. That's why we have started to demand total separation. Mm. So even the SOO group have to upgrade or update their, you know, demand according to the situation at hand. How, how does that work, uh, Ginza? Because uh like we, you know, we, when we speak to, let's say, people who were displaced, uh, who uh, were from some of these villages on the periphery in mm. Kangpokpi district, for example, mm. uh, villages like Sadar Jaute and, and the, in that belt, mm. uh, when they need to access a marketplace, mm. when they need to access uh, anything that is not available in the forests that or in the villages that mm. constitute their land, they have to go through or they have to. Uh, interact with or transact with uh, the Mete who live, you know, just across the field, across the right, paddy. Right. So, so in real terms, how does this uh, separation look in your mind or, or in the idea of your organization? Right. Uh, we've been living with the Mete community for a long, long time and uh, we never look them as our enemies. <coughs> However, <coughs> recently, uh, there's a lot of changes happening in Manipur, uh, a lot of discrimination toward uh, uh, one particular community. Mm. Uh, they have started, you know, calling us, uh, you know, poppy cultivators, mm. foreigners, illegal immigrants, mm. all those sorts. And uh, they introduce uh, forest policy to kind of grab our lands. Mm. So all this put together, you know, inside uh, the friendliness, uh, uh, it, you know, uh, kind of agitates the tribal people mm. uh, when, when we look at all these policies. Mm. So there are 
uh, I, I would say there are three major uh, policies which the state government led by Biren Singh uh, eventually led to this you know, crisis. The first, uh, the first thing is the, uh, the introduction of uh, various uh, forest policies like reserve forest, uh, protective forest and wildlife sanctuary in tribal lands. Uh, trying to, you know, uh, get as many tribal lands for the government. Mm. That is one. And number two is the ST demand, which the Meite are asking. Mm. Uh, the ST demand has an inner uh, agenda. Mm. It's, not a, it's not only for the reservation mm. point of view. It is again uh, related to land issues. Because according to the Constitution of India, under the Article 370C, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it uh, protects the tribal lands, mm. saying that you know non ST cannot purchase land from the uh, tribal land. Mm. So, with, uh, b because of that, the Meite are not able to purchase land, tribal lands here. Mm. So, in order for them to purchase land, they need to, they have to become ST. Mm. I think that is the agenda behind the ST demand. Mm. And thirdly, the NRC. Mm. Uh, <coughs> the plan, uh, they are pl planning to introduce NRC with the cutoff year of 1951. Mm. So anyone who is coming to Manipur after 1951 will be considered as illegal. Mm. So all these three points, you know, put together uh, points toward one thing, which is, you know, the Meite are trying to grab the tribal lands. Mm. That's, you know, give insecurity to the tribal people. Mm. And uh, if I may continue, um, uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, one village, Kuki village, Ke Song Zhang, was evicted and it was bulldozed uh, in the pretext of, you know, protected forest. Mm. <coughs> the government said that the uh, Ke Song Zhang village is under protected forest mm. and they uh, evicted the village and you know uh, remove all the bulldoze all the houses there mm. so that is the one incident and then after that uh, the churches in infal three churches were you know bulldozed again mm. evicted again demolished mm. so all this incident comes to you know led to the you know agitation mm. and as we all know third may when the atsum all Tribal Student Union uh, Manipur organized Solidarity Rally. Mm. The incident of uh, burning of the Anglo Kuki Centenary Gate and uh, the people who went to the rally were beaten by some, you know, Mete Miskin. All this led to the, you know, the issue. Mm. Uh, so okay, now we are close to uh, two months into uh, the, the, the actual conflict part or the violence mm. part of it. Uh, before that, there were agitations, it was, uh, you can call it propaganda or you can call it uh, hate speech, however you, you want yeah. to call it. Uh, but the actual violence, let's say, broke out on, on, on the 3rd of May. Mm. And, and we won't, at this point, get into who did what first yeah. and, and all that, because I think that has been kind of already covered to great detail. Mm. Uh, how does the agitation on your part and because uh, people are facing a great deal of difficulty, tens of thousands are still displaced. Mm. Kids are not being able to go to school for two reasons. One, that of course schools are currently shut, but, but also those schools are currently housing uh, several thousand of the displaced themselves because, yeah. you know, that's where the space is. Uh, everything, the economy is suffering. You have to get basic materials from Mizoram instead of from Manipur. Mm. Or, or from other parts of Manipur. Uh, so, so where do we go from here? How do you see the next couple of months uh, developing? How do you see the process sort of moving forward? Or is it going to be stalemate until all demands are met? Right, uh, it's going to be kind of uh, going to, uh, everything is going to be the same. I mean, like it is right now. Because we cannot move forward at the moment because, like you said, uh, all the uh, educational schools are occupied by the displaced people and we cannot uh, start the uh, school as well. And on the other hand, uh, almost every day we've been attacked uh, by the Meite armed groups. 
every now and then uh, we hear villages being attacked, uh, uh, villages being burned. Uh, so we cannot, we cannot be, uh, we cannot stay as if there is no war. So we have to be prepared for the war. I mean, we are not going going to go and uh, go out and attack the native villages. We have to make sure that we defend our villages. That's why we cannot live a life as if there are peace. Mm. So everyone has to be ready. Mm. That's why uh, we need to uh, protect our land, protect our bound boundary uh, villages which are in the boundaries. Mm. So life cannot be normal at the moment, I would say. Mm. So education, business has to stand still for now. How long can you keep, can you sustain uh, this movement, this agitation, if things remain as they are? I cannot uh, say anything. I don't know what the future holds for us, but as far as we are concerned, we will uh, continue to uh, defend our land, uh, come what may. Uh, um, we are prepared to face whatever, you know, situation that, uh, that befall us. So we will continue and we don't know. Uh, we, we, the government is, is saying that uh, they're gonna send uh, relief materials, but so far uh, it has not reached, or we are not aware that it has reached mm. to us. So, but still, uh, we are going to maintain that from our side uh, through the uh, help from other organizations uh, here and outside the states. Do you think the central government has a good grip on uh, events uh, and an understanding of the complexity of uh, th this conflict uh, and therefore are able to contribute effectively to finding a solution? I don't think the government understood the actual uh, situation. Uh, they, may be un they, they may understand the issue or they don't want to you know, actually help. There's two things, right? Mm. Whether they are ignorant of the situation or they knew the situation so well and they don't want to help. That mm. kind, of, I think, the possibility. Because almost every day uh, there are life, uh, there are loss of life, and whenever some big, uh, big official coming from the central government uh, came here in Lamka, mm. uh, Certain, you know, cookie villages will be burned and attacked every time. Even the last time when Amit Shah came, mm. even while he was here, there are some villages which have been attacked. Mm. So, Amit Shah, uh, Sir, Sir, uh, Sir G. Amit Shah himself knew the situation, but I don't think he is, you know, he is willing to act because he, he pretty well know that the situation here, the law and order situation collapsed and the government is not able to handle the situation. He is well aware of that. Still, he is letting the uh, Chief Minister N. Biren Singh uh, lead the government despite of the fact that he is not able to han handle the law and order situation. Yeah. So, if the central government really understood the volatile uh, issue here, they should have uh, uh, introduced president rule uh, way back. But, but do you think that's in the interests of the people to have President's rule uh, with the kind of presence of security forces that will uh, kind of entail in order to keep things going? Central security forces will have perhaps even less of an understanding, at least the soldiers on the ground, right? Mm. They will come from the rest of India mm. who, uh, you know, perhaps are alien to uh, your language, your culture, your food habits, uh, the climate, uh, and of course, also the issues for which you are fighting. Right. Right, but uh, yes, uh, there would be some disconnect in, in that part, but uh, if there is a precedence rule, at least the uh, governance uh, will not be of the, uh, the state anymore. Mm -hmm. It has to be, it will be governed by the central government and the, uh, I think there will be law and order issue. Mm. Uh, and, you know, many lives could be saved because if the president rule is there, the, the central army will be uh, ruling the, uh, the state and they will save people's lives. Mm. Uh, 
I think we can, we can uh, head towards wrapping up, Ginza, maybe a couple more questions. One, one of course, being that the central government at present, the BJP, uh, has a self-professed uh, uh, Hindutva ideology mm. uh, and uh, also this present uh, bout of violence which uh, again has lasted almost two months mm. uh, in which hundreds of churches and we have seen evidence of it mm. uh, whether they are uh, ch and across denomination right. whether they are uh, Maiti Christian churches or Kuki churches or even the odd Naga church here and there mm. uh, all kinds of churches have, have come under attack. Uh, in the light of that broader sort of difference that exists uh, and, and the ideology that exists in, in the centre. Uh, what is your real hope uh, in, in this particular government led by Narendra Modi? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very difficult to say. Till now, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has not spoken up a single word uh, for Manipur. I think he's kind of ignore, ignoring Manipur. Uh, I think altogether, both the Cookies and Meite, uh, um, there, there are over 130 lives have been lost so far. And so far, uh, Prime Minister Modi has not uh, uttered a single word. So, I don't know, uh, is the Prime Minister not considering us uh, as an Indian? Or are we a lesser Indian? We don't know. I think the government is just, let, is just looking at us and, you know, watching us, killing each other. So, if they are really interested in our uh, issue, they should have take things in, 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 into their hand and control. They, they could have stopped so many lives. Like I said, they could have introduced the president rule mm. and take the law and order in their hand and stop killing. But instead, they do not do that and, you know, they allow people to loot, to loot arms in the armory and allow us to shoot each other. They should have stopped that. So the Prime Minister should have, you know, focus more into Manipur and they should uh, work out and, you know, bring a solution to our state. Uh, finally, because uh, the other sort of stark reality of uh, Manipur today is that uh, this violence hasn't just affected uh, people who have directly faced physical violence. Mm. Uh, it seems to have affected every class uh, of society uh, irrespective of where, who you might belong to, you might be uh, Mayan, Pangal, you yeah. might be politically elite. Mm. Uh, no one has been spared, including yourself. Right. So if I can end on a personal note, uh, on May 3rd and 4th, uh, how was it for you? What has your experience been uh, of, of, of the, 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 this the war, as you call it? Uh, and uh, what effect has it had on your family and, and your friends? And how has it changed the fabric of life in Manipur? Right. Um, as a as a you know leader of organization, on 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 the third May, the moment now uh, we get to know about the uh, burning of the Anglo Kuki Centenary Gate, I rush uh, to the uh, site with my team, and within no time, you know, a riot broke out in the border area of the district and we also, I myself also rushed to the spot and um, we were shot with tear gas and I was also, you know, part of that, I mean, in, in the group. So from, from that night till today, I, I do not have a proper sleep or I, I, I or spend time with my family. So every day, uh, you know, uh, we have to look after things. Uh, so there is no rest uh, ever since that day. And like I said, I, personally, I do not have much uh, time to spend with my family. And there are many times, you know, my home is just like, uh, it's, it's only a place for eating food and sleep. Mm. The moment I'm awake, I'm, I'm off to the field mm. kind of thing. So it's been difficult. All right. And I think you have uh, some, some time to go before your struggle, before, before uh, this agitation uh, comes to any kind of fruition. Uh, all the best, Inza. Thank, Thank you very you. much for talking to Newsquake. You're welcome. Thank you.